I am Mark Greenstein of Ivy Bound. Thanks for following along. I want to explain how the PSAT fits in to the SAT and even the ACT. A lot of students have gotten their PSAT scores back. The rest of you will this month. And the scaling is not true to the SAT's scaling. SAT is what counts. The colleges do not care about a PSAT score. The scaling on the SAT runs from 200 to 800. For some reason, on the PSAT, the College Board has strangely deemed the scale to cap out at 760. So, double that and 1520, 760 on math, 760 on verbal, becomes a perfect score. You've heard of 1600 as the perfect score, but on the PSAT, that's not the case. So, does the perfect score PSAT only mimic a 1520 on the SAT, or might it presage a 1600, or at least close, on the SAT? It's in between. When you have no more room to go higher, a perfect score, zero wrong, has a good chance of indicating that you will get zero wrong and thus 1600 on the SAT as well. But the SAT is slightly harder. It has a few extra math questions that are deliberately harder than the PSAT's math. It is slightly longer. That shouldn't affect people, but some people with stamina, it does. The best way to truly mimic how your kid would do on the SAT is to take a practice SAT. You can do that through books. The official SAT study guide has five te four tests that actually were given earlier and have scales that are pretty appropriate. Um, we at Ivy Bound have a few more beyond those, and our students are able to test themselves even further. As for the ACT, that's a more sketchy correlation. The ACT used to have a table that compared ACT scores with SAT scores. It's not a very valid table anymore, the SAT being kind of in flux. So ACT to ACT is probably the proper comparison, and you can do that too. Practice ACTs are available using the official ACT study guide, or again, Ivy Bound students have some extras that are out there for the testing and for the evaluation. I hope this is helpful. Thanks again.